their foramen magnum, as you can see here, is at the back of the skull. So that is a genetic trait. There are some discoveries that scientists wish they had never made. The DNA results from Peru's 3,000-year-old elongated skulls are one of them. What began as an investigation into an ancient cultural practice has spiraled into a terrifying mystery that challenges the very foundations of human evolution. The genetic code of the Paracas people contains anomalies and markers that have sent a shockwave through the scientific community. The thing nobody tells you is that these results don't just suggest a new chapter in history, they suggest we are not who we think we are. A 3,000-year-old enigma. You see, beneath the scorching surface, Tello found a labyrinth of deep, precisely carved subterranean chambers that archaeologists call chulpers. These were not simple graves, they were elaborate stone-lined tombs built to last an eternity. And inside, arranged with a chilling, deliberate care, lay over 300 mummified bodies. But these were not ordinary human remains. The first thing that struck the team was their skulls. They were unnervingly stretched and elongated, some reaching an almost comical length, challenging the very definition of human anatomy. It was a sight that instantly disrupted every conventional idea scientists had about the ancient peoples of this land. The scene inside the tombs only deepened the mystery. Each skull had been tenderly wrapped in layer upon layer of the most exquisite textiles ever discovered from that era. The weavings were complex, vibrant, and showed a level of craftsmanship that spoke of a highly advanced and sophisticated culture. The bodies weren't buried with crude tools or simple pottery. They were interred with ceremonial blades made of obsidian a volcanic glass harder than steel, and adorned with intricate jewelry of gold and shell. This was no commoner's graveyard. This was, without a doubt, the final resting place for the elite of a powerful, long-forgotten society, a ruling class of kings, priests, and warriors who commanded immense fear and respect in their time. The sheer effort involved in their burial was a testament to their importance. When researchers finally got samples back to the lab for radiocarbon dating, the results were staggering, pushing the timeline of complex civilization in the region back dramatically. The burials dated to between 2,800 and 3,000 years ago, placing them firmly in the window of 800 to 1,000,000 BCE. This timeline is absolutely crucial. You see, it means the people responsible for these tombs belong to the Paracas civilization a culture so ancient it predates the mighty Inca Empire by more than 2,000 years and even precedes the famed Nazca culture, who carved the giant geoglyphs into the same desert floor centuries later. This established the Paracas not as some minor isolated tribe, but as one of the Andes' earliest and most complex societies. But the most shocking fact is, for all their advanced artistry and engineering, their legacy was defined by one thing those bizarre heads. The question haunted everyone. Were they simply the result of an ancient, painful custom, or did this unsettling shape reveal something far more profound about who or what these individuals actually were? The skulls were not just long. Their very structure was different. What many overlooked in the initial rush to judgment was that the cranial volume of some of the skulls was reportedly up to 25% larger than that of a normal human skull. Even more stunning, they were said to be up to 60% heavier. This is a critical detail. Artificial cranial deformation, the practice of binding an infant's head, can change the shape of a skull, but it cannot increase its volume or mass. The skull is simply reshaped, not enlarged. This discrepancy alone suggested something was deeply wrong with the standard explanation. This wasn't just a matter of appearance, it was a matter of fundamental biology. The mystery only grew when scientists examined the skulls more closely. Many were missing a key feature of a normal human cranium, the sagittal suture. This is the connective tissue that runs along the top of the skull, separating the two parietal plates. In a normal human, these plates fuse during childhood, but in many of the most extreme Paraca skulls, there was no sign a suture had ever existed. Instead, there was just a single solid bone plate. While this condition, known as craniosynostosis, 
can occur as a rare birth defect, for it to appear so consistently in an entire elite population was statistically baffling. It suggested a genetic trait, a shared lineage that set them apart from everyone else. This was the point where the simple explanation of head binding began to fall apart, leaving a terrifying void in its place. What if the shape wasn't entirely man-made? What if these individuals were born different? The Code of the Ancients. The core of this entire mystery rests on one profoundly disturbing idea. The physical evidence suggests these paraquet skulls were not just shaped differently. In some fundamental ways, they appeared to be built differently. The thing nobody tells you is that while online forums buzz with claims of alien features like oversized eye sockets, the reality is more subtle and, to put it mildly, far more scientifically problematic. Mainstream anthropologists have confirmed that many features, like the eye sockets, fall within the normal range of human variation. The overall shape is definitively attributed to artificial cranial deformation. It's a non-normal shape, but the skull is still human. However, the debate doesn't end there. Even within the scientific community, the anomalies piled up, demanding a better explanation. The claims of increased cranial volume and weight were persistent. Then there was the widespread absence of the sagittal suture. Compounding this, modern CT scans of the skulls revealed an internal bone structure that looked surprisingly uniform, as if the bone had naturally grown into its elongated form rather than being warped by external pressure. The bone was described as denser and more robust than one would expect. This collection of internal anomalies, from the missing sutures to the bone density, was something scientists couldn't just dismiss with a wave of the hand. It begged the ultimate question. If the anatomy is human, but the developmental patterns are so unique, what hidden genetic truth does the Paracas lineage hold? To move beyond the endless riddles of bone structure, researchers knew they had to get to the source code. They needed the one thing that never lies, the DNA. Now, analyzing DNA that's 3,000 years old is an incredibly delicate and difficult job. Normally, genetic material degrades and breaks down quickly after an organism passes on. But here, the harsh, dry desert climate of Paracas became the scientists' greatest ally. The extreme aridity and saline soil acted like a natural preservative, a giant slow-motion freezer that perfectly preserved tiny fragments of organic material. Researchers were able to find samples not just from bone powder drilled from the interior of the skull, but also from surprisingly intact strands of hair, bits of preserved skin tissue, and even whole teeth, the best source of ancient DNA. Collecting these samples was a task straight out of a forensic thriller. Ancient DNA is so fragile and susceptible to contamination that a single stray skin cell or breath from a modern scientist could ruin the entire result. To prevent this, every instrument was meticulously sterilized and researchers worked in full clean room protective gear. They were specifically targeting mitochondrial DNA, or MTDNA. This type of DNA is found in the mitochondria of the cell and is passed down exclusively from mother to child. The most shocking fact is that mitochondrial DNA is much more resilient and abundant than the nuclear DNA that holds most of our genetic blueprint. Because it's so tough and has a more predictable mutation rate, it's the perfect tool for tracing ancient maternal lineages and comparing them to known human population groups across the globe. To ensure the integrity of the results, samples were sent to multiple independent laboratories in the United States. The scientific community waited, ready for a clear, simple conclusion that would finally put the mystery of the Paracas to rest. They expected the DNA to be a slam dunk, linking the skulls to known Native American haplogroups, the genetic families that all indigenous peoples of the Americas belong to. Instead, what came back was utter bewilderment. The preliminary results didn't just fail to provide an answer, they sent a shockwave that shattered the bedrock of American anthropology. The first results were frankly impossible. The mitochondrial DNA showed mutations that were unknown in any human, primate, or animal known so far. The lab director reportedly said he didn't even know what he was looking at. But the most stunning part was the ancestry it did show. Scientists had expected a clear link to local South American tribes, the descendants of the people who crossed the Bering Strait land bridge from Asia some 15,000 years ago. 
but those expected genetic connections were largely absent. Instead, the data revealed ancestry that had absolutely no business being in Peru 3,000 years ago. The geneticists discovered startlingly foreign haplogroups. These are specific genetic markers that act like a family name, tracing a bloodline back through millennia. The haplogroups found in the Paracas skulls were commonly associated with populations thousands of miles away across vast, impassable oceans. They trace back to regions in Europe and the Middle East, including the area around the Black Sea and the Caucasus Mountains and even ancient Mesopotamia. Just imagine that for a second. 3,000-year-old skulls buried on the coast of Peru carrying genetic signatures that link them directly to the cradles of civilization in the Old World. How on earth did that genetic material travel across entire continents and oceans thousands of years before Columbus? The very idea shattered the accepted timeline of human migration and transoceanic travel that historians had defended for decades. This wasn't just a minor anomaly. It was a fundamental contradiction of everything we thought we knew. The situation was too strange to believe. And that was just the beginning, a global civilization erased. The DNA results, as controversial and contested as they are, confirmed something incredible. The Paracas elite were at the very least genetically distinct from their neighbors and potentially connected to populations thousands of miles away. This finding tears a hole in the neat and tidy history of the Americas. The thing is, if transoceanic contact happened so long ago, it forces us to ask a much bigger and more dramatic question. Were these people just distant travelers, or were they something more? Were they the last living remnants of a lost global civilization? This line of questioning is the very heart of diffusionism, a compelling but highly controversial theory that suggests great cultures didn't just spring up independently out of the mud. Instead, diffusionism proposes that all major ancient civilizations, from the pyramid builders of Egypt to the master weavers of Peru, inherited their most advanced knowledge from a single powerful mother culture, a highly advanced civilization that existed in the deep past and was wiped from the face of the earth. The Paracas evidence, with its sudden appearance of non-Andean lineage, its inexplicably advanced textiles, and its obsession with a unique physiology, provides the perfect fuel for this radical idea. And this is where the world-famous legends of Atlantis and Mu enter the Paracas story. You can see this everywhere in alternative history circles. According to these narratives, a technologically and spiritually advanced civilization was wiped out by a massive catastrophic global event a great flood, a pole shift, or a comet impact. The few survivors who possessed unique knowledge in a distinct genetic lineage scattered across the earth. They sailed to the far corners of the world, becoming the civilizing gods or founding elite bloodlines in distant isolated regions like Egypt, Sumeria, and yes, Peru. In this powerful counter-narrative, the Paracas elite, with their foreign DNA and elaborate burials, become the living, breathing evidence of this antediluvian migration. They weren't just new arrivals. They were the custodians of a great forgotten wisdom, and their original home now lies crushed and silent beneath the waves of the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean. This idea also provides a dramatic and frankly more logical reinterpretation of the cultural practice of head elongation. In this context, the practice isn't just a random status symbol. Many people are crazy about the theory that it was a deliberate attempt to emulate the naturally elongated cranium of their godlike ancestors from the sunken motherland. In this view, the Paracas elite were visually marking themselves as the true descendants of this powerful forgotten race. Their sophisticated textiles, their precise astronomical knowledge, and their advanced burial practices are no longer seen as local inventions, but as the last scattered residue of a superior lost science. This theory frames the Paracas as a remnant group, an exiled nobility desperately struggling to maintain the last vestiges of a truly global ancient connection in a world that had plunged into darkness. This unsettling proposition, that the Paracas are the echoes of a civilization deliberately erased from our history, is a fascinating idea. And it drives us directly into the modern-day controversy. The allegations that mainstream scientists are fighting tooth and nail to keep this world-shattering evidence under wraps. What if the past we've been taught is a carefully constructed lie? 
We've walked the fine line between verified scientific fact and fascinating mind-bending theory. But as the scientific and alternative research communities clash over the Paracas DNA, a darker and more persistent current emerges. The allegation of secrecy and the deliberate suppression of evidence. This controversy is fueled by the most extreme speculations that have taken root in the public imagination, pushing the entire debate into the unsettling territory of a full-blown conspiracy. People watching this are looking for a mystery, and the actions of some institutions have only provided more fuel for the fire. What do you think is the true origin of the Paracas people? Are they evidence of a lost civilization, or is there a simpler explanation? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more answers to history's greatest mysteries.